This is a tutorial on how to create scale drawings in functional skills questions. Now, when you get a question on this, first of all, you'll be given a sketch. Now, this sketch might be an indoor room or an outdoor space such as a garden, anything like that. And we're actually going to look at a garden as an example. So if I just quickly draw a freehand sketch of a rectangular shaped garden, and then we'll put the dimensions of that garden because again they will be given to you. So we'll say the width of the garden or the length across the top that's going to be 8 meters. The width down the side that's going to be 6 meters and then we're going to add a couple of things in the garden so in the bottom left hand corner we'll put a pond and that's going to be 2 meters on either side so two and two and then in the top right hand corner we'll have a decking it's like patio style area and that is going to be four meters across and three meters top to bottom so this is all you need this is a sketch which I say they'll give to you and then the question might say something along the lines of draw this to scale. Now in order to do this you'll need some graph paper but again that will be provided to you in your question paper. So we're going to go into some graph paper now and we'll look at the method for creating this sketch and making that into a scale drawing. So I've brought the graph paper up. The most important part of this scale drawing is if it's not given to you, which it isn't usually in level 2, is to actually create your own scale. What I usually do for this is pick a distance so obviously you can see you've got this graph paper is split up into large squares. On a real piece of paper these tend to be two centimeters but we're not going to worry about how much that distance is in real life because it doesn't really matter for your question. What we're going to do is just pick a distance so I tend to go with one large square and you just need to draw a horizontal line across and then two small vertical lines at the end just to show you that that is the distance you've chose. The next bit is completely up to you. You're going to write a number on there that suggests that this square on this piece of paper, how far does that equate to in a real life situation? So for example it could be half a metre, one metre, two metres, five metres, whatever. There's no right or wrong answer to this. You just need to ensure that when you do pick one your sketch is actually going to fit on onto your page. So if I go back now to the sketch, see what measurements we had. So our largest number, our largest distance, was actually 8 meters. So we need to make sure that back on our scale, whatever we choose is going to allow us to fit 8 meters on that page. So I'm just going to sort of trial and error. A co really common one would be to have that one square as a meter. So that's what I'm going to try and go with, but before I actually start drawing it out, I'm just going to count that that will fit across our page. So if I start here, I count 1 square is a metre, 2 metres, 3 metres, 4 metres, 5 metres, 6 metres, 7 metres and 8 metres. So it will fit, and then let's just check it fits from top to bottom where we had 6 metres, so that would be 1, 2 metres, 3, 4, 5, six so it will completely fit so that's fine I'm gonna stick with that scale in that case I'm gonna go back to the sketch again just to see what exact measurements we needed so it was eight by six and then obviously we've got the pond and the deck in inside that so first thing I'm gonna do is connect those lines up now obviously when you're drawing this yourselves you'll need to use a ruler so that it's accurate and fits on the lines properly I'm just drawing this freehand but it's just to give you an idea of the method that you'll need to use. So that's your 8 metre line across the top. Actually, we'll change that to a different colour just so it stands out a bit better for you. We'll go in blue. So I've count them up again. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's your 8 metre line and I would label that as well just so they know exactly what you've done when the examiner's marking it. 
down the side we had six meters so that's gonna be one two three four five six and again you can put a label on there to show that's six meters we're gonna do the same on the opposite side so it was a rectangle shape so one two three four five six and obviously we're gonna just connect that across the bottom well let's just do that again went a bit wonky there just going to connect that at the bottom line for another 8 meters. Okay, so we've drawn the outline of the garden. I'm just going to check once again what the measurements were for the pond and the decking. So the pond, bottom left corner, 2 meters by 2 meters. So we'll start with that one. Uh, we'll go, we'll stay with blue for the pond. So what you need to do count from the bottom left corner one square two square so it's two meters up and then one two across again so it's a two by two meter pond I would label inside just to say that's a pond and then again add your measurements to show that it was actually two meters by two meters so for the decking that one was three meters from top to bottom and four meters across. So if I count from the top right corner, count one, two, three, four across, and one, two, three meters down, and join that back up to the edges. I'll put that in red. Again, label it just so they know that's the decking. It's always important because otherwise they don't know if whether you put that as the pond or the deck in so it's important to make sure you've labelled them cor correctly and then add your measurements so you've got 4 metres and 3 metres and that in essence is how you would do a scale drawing that's all you need to do so remember that first important step is if it, you haven't already been given a scale choose your own scale like I say I always use one large square as a basis and then try and choose an appropriate distance that that's going to relate to in real life and then once you've done that as I said before make sure you count it out before you actually draw it because if you count it out it, sorry if you don't count it out you draw it and it doesn't fit obviously you're going to have to start again it's going to lose you some time on that if for example we'd have chosen uh, one large square is only half a meter that probably wouldn't have fit on the diagram because we'd have needed 16 large squares and looking at this it wouldn't have quite fit on there so that bit is important that you choose an appropriate number what I'm going to look at next just to finish this scale drawing tutorial off is a check question that you can sometimes be asked at the end once you've completed your scale drawing what they might say is along the lines of check to see whether you know one of your uh, one of your lines is drawn to the correct length. So if we were to check our eight meter line, all you really need to say for this is refer back to this scale, where you had one large square is equal to one meter, and you can say, well, if one large square is one meter, I've drawn eight large squares to represent eight meters, and that's enough to get you the two marks for that. It's just literally explaining how you came to draw your line using your scale. So I'm just going to write that at the top. If one large square equals one meter, I have drawn eight large squares. to show 8 meters and that's all you need to do as I say. And that's the end of the tutorial for scale drawings.